Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. <laughs> okay, so. Awesome. Okay, cool. So uh, welcome to Chamber 101. I'm Zenobia Harris, CEO for the Kent Chamber of Commerce, and I'm joined here today by my colleague, Bruce, and I'll allow him to introduce himself. Hey, I'm Bruce Walden, as I met you gentlemen. Um, I'm the business engagement manager, so you'll hear from me time to time about what's going on here at the Chamber and trying to get you involved more in, in to the business side of this and getting you out there and involved with uh, the rest of us. So I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here with you all and uh, we'll do some good work. Awesome, cool. So I will start with introducing you to the staff. Uh, if you've been involved with the chamber for some time, you'll see that the staff has changed, uh, but the services remain the same. So we have new to the chamber, Madoka Arianga, who I believe will be joining us in just a bit. She's our operations manager. So when you think about if you have a question around when is an event, where is that event? Uh, how do I access, uh, you know, notary services, anything like that? that has to do with the administrative piece of being a member. I need a brochure printed, you know, 500 brochures printed. Madoka would be the person to handle that. She handles all of our day-to-day -day operations for the chamber. And then we have Bruce Walden, who is our business engagement manager. And Bruce is essentially responsible for your membership as a whole. So if you have questions about uh, sponsorships or questions about how to get more involved, committees, uh, if you have questions, uh, general questions about your membership, Bruce would be the first uh, line of contact. I am the CEO, which means I can do what both Madoka and Bruce do, uh, but I prefer to focus on like big picture problems or big picture, big picture issues uh, for the chamber. And so you will catch me at uh, the city council meetings, uh, legislative meetings, things like that. I'm also in the community ensuring that folks understand the work that we're doing here in the chamber. Our motto here is if you're thinking about something for more than five minutes, call us. Uh, and the reason for that is we're in business for your business, but essentially what that means is we are in the business of connecting you to resources. We do not have all of the answers. We just happen to know the people who know the answers. And so again, if you're sitting at your desk and you're like, I wonder if, and it's taking you a little bit longer than you like, give us a call and hopefully we'll be able to get you to the right connection there. Uh, what I'd like to go over next is our board of directors. So because we are a nonprofit organization, I'll go a little bit into that, a little bit more into that later, but we're a nonprofit organization, which means we are managed by a board as well. So our current president for 2023 is John Scully. He runs the Scully Insurance Agency, which is an arm of farmers insurance. Our past president is Sarah McNeish, and she is the development director for Multi-Service Center. They have a, a brick and mortar in both Federal Way, and they just opened. We did a ribbon cutting last year here in the city of Kent. Our treasurer for 2023 is Keith Mosley Jr., who is uh, with Fairway Independent Mortgage. Um, and then our president-elect, so the uh, person, the woman who will be president in 2024, is Suzanne Cameron, and she runs uh, Around the Clock, Inc., which is a real estate uh, business that has been here in Kent for over 30 years. This is the continued list of our board of directors, and I will not go over this list as uh, it is exhaustive, but what I do want to point out is that the list of board of directors, what we try to do is diversify our board. Diversify, diversify our board as it relates to um, the type of business that folks are in, the size of the business, their community engagement. And then of course, when most folks think about diversity, they think about sex and age and race and all of those things uh, we think about when we're putting in our board of director uh, together. Currently we have 12 uh, directors. The first list that I showed you, I'll go back. The first list, we call this the executive board. Uh, and then we call this a, a version of the board of directors. So all 12 included. Just so you know, the application is open for no, new board members right now. Uh, we have a nominating committee. Uh, you submit an application. There is an interview process and the nominating committee will nominate folks to the board for a vote by the board of directors as a whole. So if you're interested in being on the board, uh, you're welcome to give me a call and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, again, this is interactive. I didn't say that in the beginning, but if you have any questions, you're able to just put them in the chat or raise your hand and I'll be happy to answer the question um, that uh, the answer the question that you have. So what is a chamber? 
a lot of people think that the chamber is directly connected with your city uh, and funded by your city. And that is just not uh, how we are structured. The chamber is, um, our job is really to seek and further the collective interests of the business community. So I always tell people I'm the spokesperson for the business community. I'm trying to advance legislative legislative issues that are important to the business community locally here in Kent, regionally, like in South King County, and sometimes at the state level. And so again, as I said in the beginning, I'm really engaged in a lot of conversations about what's happening in the community from transportation to safety, um, to workforce development. Uh, we are a network um, of businesses and I advocate for those businesses uh, and the community at large for the purpose of economic prosperity um, and business interests. And again, we are a nonprofit organization. I'll go into the type. There's multiple types of nonprofit organizations. We are a 501c6 and I will tell you um, the difference. This is what we are not. We are not a department of the city, the county or state government. Again, I cannot stress enough that we are not funded by the city, the county or the state government. Essentially, our job is to ensure and you know, post check those entities to ensure that uh, the business climate is top of mind when decisions are made. Uh, we are not a political body, a civic club or a professional society. We are, nor are we a service or charitable institution. So when you think of, let's say, Goodwill, or uh, that would be a 501c3. We are a 501c6. The six really stands for, we can advocate for businesses on a legislative level. And so we are part of a coalition called the South Sound Coalition. That South Sound Coalition, we employ a lobbyist who uh, takes our priorities for the year and moves those forward. So that's why we are a nonprofit, but we're 50C6. Uh, and then also good to note is that we are no relation to the Washington Chamber of Commerce or the US Chamber of Commerce. This is important um, to note that we have a connection with both the US and the Washington State Chamber of Commerce, but we're not affiliated. So sometimes the US Chamber, they're very heavily involved in, let's say, the presidential election. Your local chamber is never really going to be involved at that level, at that federal level. And so um, I just want to make that note that sometimes you will see that the US Chamber of Commerce says, this is good, bad, or indifferent, I would always check with your local chamber of commerce to ensure that that is how your local chamber of commerce uh, is thinking. And the reason for that is because it's really your voice as a member that tells us how we're thinking and what is important to the chamber. Again, just about our governance, uh, we're a 12 member board of directors. We meet on a monthly basis. We meet on the third Wednesday of every month at 8.15 a.m. That is either here in person at the chamber office or online. You can look on our calendar to find out the date uh, or where that meeting will be. If you are an active member, and what we mean by active, a member whose uh, status is active and your dues are paid, you are able to attend the board of directors meeting as a guest. Uh, we have a four-person executive committee. They also meet monthly, and so they meet the second Thursday of every month, online only. We have six active committees that help carry out the mission uh, work of the chamber, and they also meet monthly. Some of those, we'll go into it a little bit more in depth, but some of those committees meet bi-monthly, and some of them meet monthly. And then we are uh, three full-time staff members. Uh, so myself, Bruce, and Madoka. And then we will typically always have a paid intern. Paid is important because I don't believe in free labor. As a chamber, I don't believe we should support free labor. So we don't have interns that are not paid uh, whenever they're here at the chamber. So now we're going to go into the committees and the different type of committees that you yourself can get involved with. Again, this is going to be different for every business. Uh, because it's going to be really what's important to you. So I'll give you a brief overview of each of those committees. We have the events committee, and what they do is they provide guidance over the 200 events that we have. When I say 200 events, that is inclusive of all the committee meetings and also uh, the committee meetings, the events that we do with multiple chambers, and the um, board of directors meeting. So those are just all events together. So this slide should probably be updated. 
uh, the DEI committee, which stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. We just want to make sure that uh, we are creating a welcoming culture for folks coming into the chamber. Anyone that knows anything about a chamber, we ourselves are celebrating our 75th birthday. We just turned 75 back in July. And so this 75 year old organization um, has not always had a focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion, not specifically the Kent Chamber, but chambers as a whole. And so we just wanna make sure that we're welcoming all types of businesses, whether that's small business, home-based business, for-profit, nonprofit, that's what we mean when we talk about diverse businesses. Then you have your ambassador committee. It's a very small exclusive group of professionals that work to help us uh, with outreach to our community, to our business community. So those ambassadors meet on a monthly basis. They go out into the community and they pop into businesses and say, hey, we're the chamber, let us know if you need anything. They also are tasked with um, uh, reaching out to our newest members just to ensure that they don't have any questions. You can imagine with three staff members and an average of five or seven businesses joining each month, we cannot keep up and meet every single business. And so the ambassador committee um, is a great group uh, to join. I will add a little bit more with the ambassador committee. Most members start with ambassador committee because you are then introduced into the fold and then you're going out and speaking to new businesses. You can market, your job is, hey, what about the chamber? So that's one. And then one A would be, by the way, I'm with Fairway Independent Mortgage and I can help you with A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And so the ambassador committee, once again, uh, meets on a monthly basis. Then we have our government affairs committee. I talked about that earlier, the fact that we're 501c6. The government affairs committee develops our legislative agenda and follows through. So sometimes uh, we will see things on the city council agenda that we need to either comment or get a better understanding. Either myself or someone from government affairs will attend that meeting. Then we have the finance committee. Uh, finance committee. If you like numbers, join the finance committee. That's it. It's just uh, looking at the overall budget and then on a monthly basis, just ensuring that the chamber is, uh, is on track to meet our goals financially for the year. And then last but not least is our workforce slash education committee. And they're dedicated to basically bringing the the businesses into the classroom. So we have career fairs, we have job fairs, we have um day of like shadowing at the at the school or at jobs and so we're working on also a mentorship program as well so these are the different committees that you can get involved with if you want to socialize yourself uh fast joining a committee would be able to do that all of the committees um well they range anywhere from five until 15 people just depending on the particular committee or board any questions so far nope no? Okay. All right. So why invest in the chamber? Instead of me telling why all the great reasons why you can invest in the chamber, I'd like to hear from you, Josh, tell me why you have invested in your chamber membership. I mean, starting a new business, obviously, I'm looking for every opportunity to network. Um, but I'm also passionate about the community we live in, you know, especially like I uh, mentioned before, having two kids that go to school in Kent School District, and you know, it, it's our home. And we have no plans of leaving uh, East Hill Kent area anytime soon. And so obviously, uh, like I said, having firsthand, you know, access to important issues and, and kind of hearing things that the normal public may not know um, has been very valuable to me. Um, and it's stuff that I can share with other people, right? Um, and spread awareness on certain issues uh, to bring more awareness for the Kent Chamber and helping you guys grow. So definitely the, uh, you know, definitely seeking referrals, opportunities, networking, looking for financial advisors like, you know, Mr. Edward Jones here, Mr. Kim, uh, to start referral partnerships, but, uh, but the hearts with the community exposure and the support, I think for me. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for sharing. Andrew, why did you invest in the chamber? Yeah. So as a financial advisor, you know, I do have to work with a lot of my clients, but there's not a lot of things that I can't do. Like mortgage, like estate planning, like finding real estate for people, mm -hmm. but they come up to me and ask me for these ad advice. So with the chamber, I'm able to get these advice on referring these clients to the people that are professionals in the area that I trust and someone that I know that they can do a great job to take care of my clients. Right. 
Great, great. All great reasons. Um, we have join slash invest. I'm going to just remove join. I, I, I included invest because joining is one thing. When you make an investment, you actually um, you actually nurture that investment. You never put your money in and don't look at your 401k account. You actually look at it and you invest time, you invest energy. The same thing applies to your chamber membership. You can join the chamber, but you're gonna get the most out of your chamber membership when you invest. You invest your time, you invest your resources. Um, and so beyond that, here are all of the other things that uh, our benefits of investing in the chamber, cost-effective business savings. If you're looking to hire someone, you could post your jobs for free. If you need business advocacy, Zenobia, they're shutting down my street next week. That's going to cost me money. What can we do about that, right? Program and event involvement. You know, Josh, you may want your kids to do a overseas program and you don't know where to connect them. Well, we have and are working on, thanks to Madoka, we're working on our relationship with the um, our Japanese chamber, our sister chamber, and the kids just left. Um, they came from Japan here to um, learn what we have going on here. So there's a lot of different things that your chamber can connect you with. And then, of course, seeking customer referrals. I can't say this enough about the customer referrals. Joining the chamber does not mean I'm now going to be walking businesses or walking business to you. I, myself, Bruce Madoka, we're going to create opportunities where you can farm what I come from, a telemarketer, farm your own customer referrals, right? And we all know that people do business with people that they trust. They do people business with people that they've seen in the community before because that lends to your credibility. So we create these environments where you can be involved. And that way, it hopefully it leads to customer referrals. When we talk about community exposure, we're not just talking about, you know, putting your uh, face up on a billboard. I don't know if anyone saw back in the month of May when we had our business expo, we had five billboards on uh, 167. And that was a, a billboard to just say, hey, come to the expo. It's held by the Kent Chamber of Commerce. We got a lot of action on our website because people were just looking like, what is the chamber? A lot of people didn't know what is the chamber, right? And so that's some exposure for you, but we have very dedicated exposure. We have great marketing opportunities. We we send out a monthly um, on this electronic communications. We send out a weekly newsletter. You can, uh, when you become a member, you actually get a linked photo of your logo that goes to your website or your name, depending on if we don't have a logo. They click on it. Anyone who gets the newsletter, they click on it. They go directly to your website. Whatever you've provided us, we put that out in the community. Uh, we have social media channels that we, that's on the next page. We have social media as well. So you as a member can buy a spot um, in the newsletter whether you want that to go out every single week when we send a newsletter, for instance, King County Metro uh, purchased the entire year to have their logo that is clickable at the top of the newsletter for the entire year. And that logo does not move and they get a lot of clicks on that. Um, you can also purchase something midway through and then down at the bottom if you like. Uh, we have partnerships with local nonprofits. And so just last week, we missed it because we were busy, head down. Uh, but they had, uh, we have a partnership with communities and schools. They had that wonderful school drive. Um, and so if you are one, like you said, Josh, you want to get involved in the community, it would be great to go and donate some, you know, school supplies to your local nonprofits or, you know, go and work with us at the food bank where we do things like that. In the month of December, we're going to be hosting a nonprofit panel. So, uh, you know, eight or nine nonprofits that are here in the city are going to talk about what services they provide. And then maybe there's an opportunity for you to donate your time, your energy, your knowledge, your money, whatever you'd like. Um, and then also we have uh, you, everyone pretty much has access to 24-7 uh, access to our business directory. The business directory is located on kentchamber.com and it is a um, clickable directory. So you can just flip through. It's a flip book. There you go. It's a flip book through a directory. And so as a member, you don't pay anything extra. You are in the directory. When you are a new member of the chamber, the following year, the most, the most recent or upcoming um, 
uh, directory, you have an opportunity for a very low discounted ad to go into that as well. And we print 4,000 copies of those. They're at your local hotels, your restaurants, uh, SeaTac Airport, they are everywhere. And anywhere you see the chamber, you see a stack of those directories as well. Any questions about that? Okay. Also, won't beat these to death, but um, sponsorship opportunities. Great sponsorship opportunities. If you didn't know, we're having our annual gala on the 22nd of September, a great opportunity to connect with new businesses. Member referrals, I will tell you this, the chamber does not shop. We try our hardest not to shop out of our network. And so if we need a plumber, it needs to be in the network. If someone, we were looking for new doors uh, for the chamber, they need to be in our network. We're very serious about the referrals. We don't want to tell you to shop within your network, but we don't do that as well. Even down to Comcast, they are a member. That's where we have our phones. Um, and then also social media exposure. We have three Facebook pages, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. We have LinkedIn, Twitter. We even have a TikTok that interns did for me last summer, but I'm not a TikToker, so. You haven't seen anything from the chamber in a while. Um, and then last but not least are ribbon cuttings and grand openings. I don't care if you change the carpet at your building. If you want to cut a ribbon and have the mayor there and take a picture, call us. We'll set up a ribbon cutting for you. It's really great. If you do not have a brick and mortar or your brick and mortar is not here in Kent, you can always host, host a grand opening at the chamber. The, it would be the same. You would come here. We would invite people that you think it would be important for you to connect with you know, provide like snacks, drinks, and then we'd have a good time. But you as the person hosting would get the opportunity to um, tell a little bit more about your business and, and what you do. So here, Andrew is why I had to sit this whole time. And I was saying, I don't know if you're using all of your member benefits. Part of the chamber, and I can't say this or stress this enough, is you have an instant return on your investment. Um, it really depends on what level you come in. When we start talking about investor level, then uh, the instant return on the investment may go away, but you still get a return, but not the instant. I say that to say, if you have an investment, um, an annual investment of less than $500 a year for your membership dues, you receive a free radio advertising um, with Salem Media. They play it on the radio station of your choice. and of course, they're going to offer for you to run it a little bit longer at a discounted rate, but at least you have that radio commercial with their radio voices, they come up with the script with you, and then they give you the file, which means you can put it on your social media, you can put it on your, um, on your website, whatever you want to do with it, it is yours. That's a $500 value. So that's what I'm, when I say instant return on your investment. That's an instant return on your investment. Um, you also get a free sponsored uh, feature story with I Love Kent. I can't remember the number. I want to say it's 14 different cities that South King Media uh, covers. And so they just at our last lunch and they just told us the number and I can't remember, but they just took on Auburn. So like the Auburn Examiner, um, they, there's, a, there's a lot of reach. I'll give you an example. They donate this same package that you all get for free when you join the chamber and that package sells for about fifteen hundred dollars at the gala so it is worth um, its weight in gold so you want to make sure that you do that feature ad story then you get 50 percent off your ads in the kent reporter i always tell people like make it make sense right if you're going to pay for a kent reporter ad you may want to be having a ribbon cutting to draw people there. So you get 50% off there, you've got your ribbon cutting coming, and then you've got that discount. And if you could double down with your radio commercial, that would be really great. Um, and then you also have a window clean that gets sent to you in the mail so that you can put that on your brick and mortar. Um, so folks know that you are a part of the chamber. And then of course, um, there is the opportunity for free, free job postings. Uh, two other benefits that I think are important um, is free diversity inclusion uh, workshops. So on a quarterly basis, we host uh, community conversations. We're still shopping the name, but community conversations just to talk about diversity. Um, and so Andrew being the co-chair of the diversity committee, along with Dennis, who's on our board of directors, uh, we all sit down and come up with topics that we think is, uh, think is important. And then we reach out to professionals in the community that are willing to give this information. And then if you need a free workshop, we work directly with uh, the Small Business Development Center, and they are located right 
here in Green River um, in Kent Station. So if you need a workshop on budgeting, planning, business taxes, et cetera, they can definitely get that going for you. Any questions before I move on to the member, more member benefits as it relates to events? Okay. All right. So this is just specifically to networking opportunities. Uh, I will be honest, some of these haven't happened because of COVID and it just is we're just trying to get back in the groove but we have a monthly pop-up happy hour and a pop-up means we pop up to a business and we spend money that is the entire purpose of the pop-up happy hour um, whether we're popping up to a local um, trinket shop in downtown Kent or we're popping up to agave to have margaritas the whole purpose is that we are popping up to spend money at that organization, keeping in mind that that organization is a member of the chamber. And then we have our monthly business luncheons. We have not stopped. So this is very consistent. Um, it is the first Thursday of each month from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. 11 to 11.30 is really networking. If I can try to get everybody focused by 11.30, I will. I try really hard to do that. Um, and then that event ends at one with a little bit of networking on the end as well. And then we have the business after hours that are monthly. Right now they're bi-monthly um, from 5 to 7 p.m. And it's the opportunity for a business to welcome people in. It's not a ribbon cutting. It's very informal, but you invite community as the host of that business after hours, you provide food and drinks and folks come in and learn about your business. A really great way to network. Um, I will say this, FOMO is real, fear of missing out. We do not have all of these events because we think one business owner will be able to do all of these things in one month. In one month, you got nine options of things to do. It's not that way. It's built in such a way that you find your audience, right? What isn't on here is we also host a monthly 7.30 a.m. Uh, networking event here at the chamber. And so it's really designed for you to find out where your client is going to be, where you think you're going to get maybe the best referrals or the most people, whatever you're looking for, and then try to hone in on that. Um, as a new member, I recommend popping into everything just so you can see for yourself uh, because everyone's client is going to be at a different type of um, a different type of event. Also, we have a visitor center here. And so uh, if you have brochures or you have a special going on or, you know, Josh, I just love, I wish that was on paper, that thing behind you. I think it's like your pillars or your values. If you all had that on paper and I worked at Fairway Independent Mortgage, I would slap my picture on there next to those values and have that in the visitor center and say, hey, Zenobia, when you're sending out your, um, you're sending out or your monthly invoices, can you pop this in there for me? just so people know. And so our visitor center, you are welcome to bring in postcards or whatever you need uh, to do that. Uh, and so uh, just make sure if you have business cards or anything like that, that we have a copy of them. This is a benefits will. I'm not gonna go over this, but these are all the reasons why someone would join the chamber, the learning aspect, the networking, the visibility, uh, the growth, the credibility, the support, the community. Uh, we have a lot of members, um, that, well, I would say a lot. We have a few members where this relationship with the chamber is transactional, which means they are just interested in investing their money um, to the chamber so that we can provide some of the services to some of our smaller businesses uh, and things like that. And then you have members on the opposite side of that spectrum that are really dependent on the services that the chamber offers and they need that, that leg up. And so everyone's going to fall on this scale. Um, and it doesn't matter where you fall on the scale, you are value to the chamber and your value to all of the members that we have as part of this um, ecosystem. And then staying connected. Staying connected is very, very important. Um, I can't express that anymore. Uh, you should get a lot of communication from us. Sometimes we send so much communication that we then start going to junk. Uh, and so we'll have to figure that out internally of like how that cannot happen. Um, but you definitely want to stay involved. Almost you can find almost anything that we're doing on the kentchamber.com website. So if you're like, oh, I wonder if the chamber is having a luncheon. You just go over to events, take a look at the calendar. We are, uh, we keep our calendar up to date, so you should be able to see whatever is going on. We also host other member events. So let's say um, your company is having an event and it's open to the public. 
and you either need registration or don't, you can post your own events on kentchamber.com as well. So use that as a resource to know. If our office is closed, let's say it's Labor Day, it's around a holiday, you don't know if we're open, all of those things are listed there. Um, I'm from the old school, so I have the phone number here because it's so much easier sometimes to just pick up the phone and ask the question than it would be to maybe, you know, send an email or, you know, try to wait for someone to call you back. If you call and it's something that we can handle right then, we'd be happy to do that. So that's our direct phone number. And then here are all the other ways that you can stay connected, um, stay connected with the chamber. Any questions before I go to this last slide? Okay, um, BOLO. I know that stands for be on the lookout, but I'm not sure why that says BOLO. So be on the lookout for profile info for Kent Chamber. Oh yeah, so um, the Kent Chamber, you have something called Chamber Master where you can log in, you can pay your bills, you can buy sponsorships, you can register for events. We're going to send an email or you should have already received an email on how to set up your Chamber Master account. It's like a back end of your membership uh, where you post your jobs, where you post your events, where you you know, you can sell something in the marketplace, all of that. So be on the lookout for an email about your profile at the Kent Chamber. Please, please send us the most up-to-date logo. We have almost 400 members, so it's almost impossible for us to call you before to see if that's the most updated logo. So we give you, we put out what you give us. Um, also, after you've completed this uh, member 101 or even an event, we would love if you could write us a review on Google. Um, and then to follow us on social media, sometimes we go live, we post our events, we post community events on Facebook and LinkedIn. So make sure you like us. Uh, we are Kent Chamber of Commerce on LinkedIn, and then I'm just Zenobia Harris on LinkedIn. Um, and then on Facebook, we are Kent Chamber of Commerce. That's the page that you want to like. Um, last but not least, become an ambassador or join a committee. It's a really great way to get involved with the chamber. Um, and if you have more information or need more information before doing that, I'd say look at your calendar on kentchamber.com, pop into a meeting, see what's going on, and then you can decide if you want to be a part of that, uh, a part of that committee. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing now. And I know that was a lot. Uh, and so just checking in again, um, how you feeling? Did you learn anything new? Um, any, you know, questions, comments, concerns? I think I was pretty familiar with everything you shared so far. Um, definitely interested in, you know, possibly join a committee um, to get more involved. Um, I just followed you on, I had all the social media, but I didn't have you on LinkedIn. So I got you on LinkedIn. Um, and by the way, your, uh, your profile picture is out of date on LinkedIn. Just so you know, just in case you didn't know that. Is it? There's no picture. I'm just kidding. <laughs> on LinkedIn? You're, well, that's you're... not me. Oh, really? Oh yeah. I have a picture. I'm like standing. Uh, <laughs> Look at Andrew's like, I'll no, double no, no, check. No, that's not me. I'm standing up with like my, I'm talking to people. I'm like, Hey. On, on the, uh, LinkedIn. Uh-huh. Zenobia Harris. I wonder if someone created another one. There you are. I'll send you a screenshot if I find a fake profile, though. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe said. it's once. Uh, I don't know. That's weird. No, it should be my on picture. On one screen, there is no it. picture. I'm noodling. I don't use LinkedIn a lot. So okay, there's cool. your picture. And then when I go to view profile, the picture disappears. That's what it is. No, so. we'll just say fake profile because then I'll feel more important that someone has right, a fake right, profile. Right, right, right. Yeah, they no, stole your, your, they stole your likeness. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Well, good. Well, I'm glad you're able. Andrew, you good? Learn anything new? Yeah, no. Um, I've been meaning to do the whole uh, check out the the radio talk. Yeah, free yeah. advertising. So I'm going to reach out to them. And it's easy. We set you up via email. They get back with you. It's really painless. And a lot of people think, oh, I have to come up with this. No, they use their radio voices. They have people. They have all type of people that they can use uh, to do that. So I nice. encourage it. All right. And I think that's that's something that I wanted to been meaning to do. It's just been pushing it off the whole time. So I got to. No worries. We'll keep. Yeah, I've, I've had good uh, experience so far with Steve Davis and uh, Marie score. Um, well, okay. Steve, Steve with uh, Salem Media and then Marie scores with is it sound publishing, I believe. Yeah. Kent reporter. Mm -hmm. Reporter. Yep. Good. Awesome. 
Well, good. Well, thank you both for joining. We really appreciate the switcheroo because, like I said, we're supposed to be here in person. Um, and so air conditioner will be fixed uh, probably as soon as we get somebody out. But it's always horrible to try to fix an air conditioner in August. Uh, and so we'll get that fixed and then we'll go back to our in-person meetings here at the chamber. Sounds great. All right, guys, have a great evening. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.